it's video time. What's shaking booktube, my name's Cam and welcome back to another video. Another day, another egg in the pocket, is what I always say. Recently I went through a couple of books, I, I absorbed them into my consciousness. And let me tell you, one was really good and the other one, it was just, it was awful. <laughs> It was bad. <laughs> I'm talking poop man in a cyclone bad. Oh shit. Get it? Shit. I'll tell you about them. I'll tell you about those two and I'll also tell you what I'm planning on reading next. I guess you could say this video is a bit of a wrap up and a TBR if we're going to be down with the down with the lingo. How do you do, my fellow booktubers? Okay. So, first, the first book I read was the last book in the Nevernight Chronicles, the Nevernight series, Dark Dawn, Gentle Friends, by Jay Kristoff. And don't worry, I'm not going to give any spoilers for this series. I'll tell you what I didn't like and what I liked and how I felt about the conclusion, but I won't give any spoilers. It was a pretty emotional end to the trilogy. I personally think I handled it pretty well. As far as flaws with Dark Dawn goes, like look I had a lot of the same issues that I already had with the other two books, and that's because it almost always comes down to writing style. I'll leave a card for the video I made on the first two books in the series, and especially if you haven't read Nevernight before, that's probably the best place to start. But yeah, most of the same issues, you know, f too many footnotes, uh, too much purple prose, and just a generally overripe writing style that I've personally feel broke immersion a lot. I don't feel that any of it was like super bad, but it was stuff that I feel pulls focus away unnecessarily from the actual story and from the events that are actually happening at that point in time in the story. Like it might be a high action, high intensity scene and there's so much purple prose and poetic descriptions for what's happening that even subconsciously and even a little bit it's pulling our attention away from the actual you know battle itself or what's supposed to be a really romantic scene but again that kind of just comes down to Jay Kristoff's writing style. With those points aside though I want to make it very clear and I don't think I made it clear enough in the first video the Nevernight Chronicles this trilogy is it's phenomenal. It really is just absolutely fantastic. So the main plot of the trilogy, a girl who is raised as an assassin on a journey of revenge, ends up finding out uh, conspiracy secrets, falls in love, etc. It has most of the tropes of a normal like fantasy or now don't flip out on me here, okay, but it does have most of the tropes of a YA adventure book. But that's okay because they're all approached pretty damn creatively as far as I'm concerned. All of the lore of the, you know, world of Nevernight was super interesting and obviously very, very well thought out and planned. It's unfortunate that most of that lore was given to us by like footnotes that were cut into the middle of uh, scenes. But back to what I liked. So the lore was fantastic. The characters were all very well written. As far as protagonists go, it's like a habit, especially in fantasy, to end up liking the side characters or supporting characters or even the villains more than you like the main hero. There's probably a million reasons why that could be a whole video in itself, but as far as the Nevernight Chronicles goes, I always felt like Mia was always the most interesting and engaging character. And she was really likable, and even the side characters were very well written and thought out as well. There were some characters that I think we were meant to like that I personally didn't, but I still feel like they were well written, if that makes sense. Perhaps most importantly though, with a fantasy series, is seeing the kind of change of the character. We Not just the character arcs through the trilogy, but the story arc, how the characters change, how the world around them changes. Basically, you want to feel a little bit exhausted going through the story because you want to feel like you're going through the trials with the characters you're reading about. It needs to feel like a journey. And this series honestly did it better than like any other fantasy series I've read in years. I also want to throw in there that the fan art for the Nevernight Chronicles is just utter perfection. Honest to god, it's some of the most dope stuff I've ever seen. So yeah, it was a satisfying journey, it was a satisfying conclusion. There are a couple more flaws that I just want to mention that were more specific to Dark Dawn rather than the first two books in the series. So there was a whole big plot point within the story. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I will say that it was a very meta part of the story, and I think people who have read it are going to know what I'm talking about. And I really... I, I didn't like it. I really didn't. I fucking... I hated that. There was a... It was all a dream part of the story as well, and that was just... <laughs> I hate that. I hate it so much. Like, the meta stuff, it was kind of bad. 
but I can get past it. But what I can't get past in something that I think was just such a silly decision on Jay's part was through that meta stuff, he directly, and I mean directly, addressed some of the criticism that he got for the first two books in the series. It was almost like he was talking, like Jay was talking to you, the reader, through the story. And like four times he brought up like the criticism around him using too many footnotes. And it was just like, I get he was being tongue in cheek. I really doubt he was like taking it too seriously, but it was so uncomfortable to read. Reading within a narrative, like within a story, the author getting defensive about criticism they got in the other books is just... I don't know what the hell that was. <laughs> I don't know. I just really, really don't think that should have been put in there. The most controversial opinion I have about Dark Dawn is that Mia's main romance through this story, you know the one I'm talking about, maybe it's just because I, di I already didn't like that character a whole lot, but I was there actually a lot of romance there? Like, I, I know it's like, you look back on it and you're like, oh, man, that's so romantic, but really think about it. What did those two characters ever do or talk about or share or experience other than just being hard asses who are good at fighting and really wanting to fuck each other. That's all I can remember about their relationship. That's it. Like we're told repeatedly that they, they love each other so much that they would, you know, destroy the sky for each other. But like, why? Just to me personally, it felt like every time they had a moment where it was meant to be romantic, we were convinced that they were in love with each other just by how much they really wanted to smash. <laughs> Like, sure, romance can lead to sex in books. I'm fine with that. I'm not against... God, I'm not against smut. I really hope that's not what it seems like. Romance can lead to sex, but romance can't just be sex. I don't know. I think I think you get the point I'm trying to make anyway. I hope I don't sound like a total prude. No more pee-pee and, and JJ. Just, just stop. Anyway, if I had to give uh, Dark Dawn a star rating, I would probably give it four stars. But if I was to give Nevernight, the Nevernight series as a whole a star rating, I would give it five stars. That's fine. It really is phenomenal. It really is fantastic. It is definitely one of the best fantasy series I've ever read. And I would highly recommend it. Sure. Okay, so that's that's the one I enjoyed. <laughs> now for the... Now for the bad one. <laughs> this is one that I spent my monthly Audible credit on. It's an Audible original, although I think you can get an actual book of this one. Also, can I add, Audible has been killing it lately. Just absolutely killing it with the Audible originals. They didn't sponsor this video and I'm not even an affiliate or anything like that. So anyway, the terrible story I was talking about is called I'm a therapist and my patient is going to be the next school shooter. Six patient files that will keep you up at night by Dr. Harper. And I need to break this down for you because it's kind of a weird situation here, okay? It's, it's a little bit weird, so just bear with me. So first of all, Dr. Harper, he isn't real. Dr. Harper is a fictional author. That's what a lot of authors do in some cases. They create a fictional name for them or pen name for them to publish some books under. But the thing is, Dr. Harper even has a website and to be fair, to, to give credit where credit's due, it's very clear there that it's fictional. Everything here is fictional. These aren't real stories. I think that's pretty obvious, to be honest. And on the website, it does tell you very clearly that Dr. Harper is not a real person and the author is not a real uh, therapist. But it's kind of weird, right? A lot of people were angry about the fact that it was like like fictional, like they were like, like they thought they'd expose them. They're like, these stories aren't real. Exposed. I didn't have a problem with that. What I thought this was going to be though, was like, you know, fictional stories where it's told from the view of a therapist, sure. But I thought they would be very, very heavily character based to create a bit of a like creepy feeling by diving into the psyche of people who intend to do real harm. That that is cool. I think that's a great idea for a little short stories. And I'm even open to it being done by someone who's not a real therapist as long as they do their research. I think that's fine. And I am confident that is something that can be done respectfully in, in regards to mental health. A lot of people were saying as, as well that this story stigmatizes a lot of mental health issues. I disagree. It's made pretty clear at the very start of the story that this therapist is dealing with exceptional cases. But don't get me wrong. It's still fucking terrible. <laughs> it still, it still sucks. But it doesn't suck because I think the author's a bad person. It just sucks because it's just bad. It's like, even by like something you would find on Creepypast or a Reddit thread, it's, it's bad. It's badly written. But anyway, I told you what I thought it would be. I thought it'd be, you know, really uh, deep character based. What it actually was, was pretty much entirely focused on just the worst therapist in the world. And like it was his story. It's almost like really bad Sherlock 
fanfic mixed with a bit of like Scooby-Doo. <laughs> like, who's better to solve a highly criminal mystery than a small time therapist? <laughs> so first of all, like I said, the guy's a just a horrible therapist. He's constantly like breaking the law and confidentiality rules on a whim. His worst trait is that he jumps to conclusions. Like every couple of pages, he has like the level of a revelation that you would expect at the end of a thriller mystery story. You know, when they have the, the big the big realization. This guy has that like three or four times in every short story. And he's almost always wrong. <laughs> at one point, he suspects his assistant so he punches him in the face. And the assistant's just like, Nah, I don't sweat it, mate. Still beats working for Telstra. <laughs> There's loopholes in the story, like massive inconsistencies. And basically everything relies on a foundation that is just absurdly unrealistic. I will enthusiastically give this story one star. Because like I said, poop tornado. Oh shit, not again. Anyway, looking forward to the future. Here is what I plan on reading next. First, I'm going to be reading The Institute by Stephen King. I'm looking forward to that. The premise of it kind of sounds like if Professor X was evil, like kidnapped all of these uh, gifted kids for more malicious purposes. That sounds pretty interesting. The next one I was hoping to read after that is Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. You might have seen the trailers for the Amazon show that's out about that. I want to read that because apparently it's about a demon and an angel teaming up to uh, basically like save the Antichrist and stop the apocalypse. I really want to read The Boy at the Top of the Mountain by John Boyne. This is a World War II historical fiction. I finally feel like I've recovered from Morris Gleitzman's series that I read a while back, which was also a historical fiction uh, based around a young Jewish boy surviving the Nazi occupation of Poland. I think I've finally recovered from reading that series, so why not shatter myself into a million fucking pieces again? Last but not least, a couple of you might be excited to hear that I'll be finally reading this one. It's Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. Don't get me wrong, the premise of the story sounds super interesting. I'm not entirely sure what it is that has put me off for so long. You know when enough time passes and you're just like, it's too late for me to jump in now, but it's still getting recommended to me. I still see a lot of like references to it online, so I want to catch up. I want to finally get up there. You know, I want to understand all of the Six of Crows memes, finally. I want to understand them so I can stop feeling older than my acid reflux would already suggest. What the devil is a Casbreca and why are there so many birds? That's how you get the influenza. Anyway, that's it for me, folks, Gen uh, gentle friends. Let me know if you've read any of these, but hey, no spoilers. I heard that if you subscribe to me, Peter Parker will dance for us at a private party. Catch her. She's got class and style. Sweet knowledge by the pound, yeah. Baby, never act wild. Very low key on the profile. Catching feelings isn't all. Let me show you how.